A systematic approach is useful when starting to interpret chest x-rays, along with some basic knowledge of anatomy. This will help to make sure you don't miss any key abnormalities. First of all, have a quick check to confirm the identity of the patient and comment on the orientation of the film. Is it PA or AP? Often, useful information may be written on the image. In terms of image quality, ask yourself if you can see everything you need to in the picture. Then check three aspects using the mnemonic RIP. R is rotation. The spinous process should be at the midpoint between the medial ends of the clavicles. I is inspiration. There should be five to seven ribs visible anteriorly. P is penetration. The degree to which x-rays have passed through the body. Is the spine visible behind the heart? We'll be using the ABCDE approach to chest x-ray interpretation. If there is a clear area of abnormality, don't hesitate to highlight it first, but remember to go through systematically afterwards to check you haven't missed anything. A, airway, lungs and pleura. Start with the trachea and work your way down. The trachea contains air, so it is blacker than its surroundings. Check if it is centrally positioned or deviated to one side. The trachea can be pulled towards the side of collapse or pushed away from the side of a tension pneumothorax. When describing a chest x-ray, the lungs are divided into upper, middle and lower zones. Note this does not correlate with the lung lobes. Look at each of the lung zones in turn for symmetry. Compare each zone with the opposite side. Do any areas look too black or too white? If so, decide which is the abnormal side. Make sure you can see lung markings going all the way to the edge of the chest wall. If you can see the lung edge with a black area surrounding it, suspect a pneumothorax. Note the pleura are not visible in healthy people. B. Bones. Look at the ribs, clavicles, proximal end of the humerus and the thoracic spine. Check for evidence of fractures or metastatic deposits and examine the shoulder joint for signs of arthritis or dislocation. C. Circulation, heart and mediastinum. Look at the size, shape and border of the heart and mediastinum. Heart size is assessed using the cardiothoracic ratio. In a PA film, the heart occupies less than 50% of the width of the thorax. A cardiothoracic ratio of greater than 50% in a PA view is abnormal and indicates cardiomegaly. Structures making up the left border of the mediastinum include the aortic knuckle, pulmonary outflow tract, left atrial appendage and left ventricle. On the right side, the border includes the superior vena cava, the right atrium and the inferior vena cava. These borders should be well defined. A blurred edge could indicate collapse or consolidation of the lung. D. Diaphragm. Each side of the diaphragm should appear as a dome with a sharp white edge against the adjacent black lung. The right hemidiaphragm is normally higher than the left by about 1 to 3 centimetres due to the liver underneath. The costophrenic angles are the areas where the diaphragm meets the ribs laterally. The cardiophrenic angle is where the heart meets the diaphragm. These angles should be clearly defined. Often, you will see the gastric air bubble under the left hemidiaphragm. E. Extra features and review areas. Look for evidence of medical intervention. For example, monitoring equipment, lines and tubes. Are they correctly positioned? If the chest x-ray appears normal so far, pay attention to the review areas. The lung apices, the hyla regions. These are made up of the bronchi and major pulmonary vessels. The left hilum is higher than the right or at the same level. They should be symmetrical in size and density. Look behind the heart, check the soft tissues, finally review under the diaphragm. In summary, this is a PA chest x-ray of Mr Smith. The film is technically adequate. On reviewing the film, there are no obvious abnormalities. I would now like to review the patient clinically.